In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who by the mystery of uh, today's great celebration, sanctify your, your whole church. We, in every people and nation, pour out, we pray, the gifts of the Holy Spirit across the face of the earth. And with the divine grace that was at work in the gospel, when the gospel was first proclaimed, fill us now with the blessings of your peace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the time for the Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together. And suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house, which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as of fire, which parted and came to rest on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues and the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven staying in Jerusalem. And this sound they gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused because each one heard them speaking in their own language. They were astounded as in amazement they asked, are not all these people who are speaking Galileans? Then how does each of us hear them in a native language? We are Parthenians, Medes, Elamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Ferga, Pamphylia, Egypt, and districts of Libya, near Cyrene, as well as travelers from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, yet we hear them speaking in their own tongues of the mighty acts of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm is, Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, you are great indeed. How manifold are your works, O Lord. The earth is full of your creatures. Send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord be glad in his works. Pleasing to him to be my theme, 
I will be glad in the Lord. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. If you take away their breath, they perish and return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created and you renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God who produces all of them in everyone. To each individual, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. As a body is one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body through many are one body, so also Christ. For one spirit we are all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we were all given to drink one spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Come, Holy Spirit, come, and from your celestial home shed a ray of light divine. Come, Father of the poor, come, source of all our store. Come within the bosom's shine, you of comforters the best. You, the soul's most welcome guest, sweet refreshment here below, and our labor rest most sweet. Grateful coolness in the heat, solace in the midst of woe. O oh, most blessed light divine, shine within these hearts of yours and our inmost fill, being filled. Where you are not, we have not. Nothing good in deed or thought, nothing free from taint of ill. Heal our wounds our strength renew, on our dryness pour your dew. Wash the stains of guilt away, bend the stubborn heart and will, melt the frozen, warm the chill. Guide the steps that grow astray on faithful who adore and confess you evermore. In your sevenfold gift descend, Give them virtue, sure reward. Give them your salvation, Lord. Give them joys that never end. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of the first day of the week, when the doors were closed where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in I'm sorry, and stood in their midst, and he said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, it was an awesome week in paradise and somewhat unexpected. I was all set for last weekend. I had done a wedding rehearsal up in Kingman on Friday for a wedding there on Saturday morning that I was going to do. I was all set with my sermon for the Feast of the Ascension last weekend. 
and then it all sort of fell apart. Uh, if you've heard the old saying, if you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans. <laughs> it's a very true saying. As I was on the way home from the wedding rehearsal on Friday, I got a call from Deacon Richard that he had tested positive for COVID. So he was not going to be here for the weekend. Since he and I had worked together during the week, I had to go and get tested. I tested positive for COVID, so I wasn't going to be here for the weekend. So I was trying to find a priest to do the wedding in Kingman because I wasn't going to be there either. Phone messages crossed because the priest from Kingman, Father Victor, was trying to call me because he had tested positive for COVID. <laughs> so he was looking for a priest for the weekend. I was lucky enough to get Father John McShane, the priest who founded our parish in 1992, to come on down and do the weekend masses for us. And they found a priest or a deacon to do the wedding up in Kingman. And they got a priest, I believe, for Saturday, but I don't think they were able to get one for Sunday last weekend or the other way around. I'm not sure what it was. So things were kind of like uh, mixed up. Uh, now this weekend I have no deacons with me. Deacon Richard is still recovering from COVID uh, and Deacon Dan caught COVID. So he's out for the next uh, few days or so. We're, we're going to get uh, through this. You may have noticed when you came in, as if anything else could happen, uh, that the bulletins that are out there are from last week. Uh, UPS decided to tell us on Friday that they had rescheduled our delivery of bulletins for Monday. So if you want a bulletin, really, you can pick one up on Monday. We're going to try not to let that happen again. Just to catch you up on a few things that I meant to do last weekend if I were here. Uh, on the 22nd of May, we had our yard sale event over in the Garza Center. About 140 people came. It was a wonderful success. People had a lot of fun. We raised $5,000, $2,500 for the art sale movie and $2,500 for our Garces Center here. I think for me, the funniest part of the day over there was watching a group of people dancing the Macarena sitting in chairs. You can only visualize that. And then on May 26th, uh, we aired the 100th episode of the Thursdays with Charlie show. We've been doing that show since May 7th, 2020, almost every week. And very much thanks to James Brzezaski, who has filmed every one of those shows. So the 100th episode was May 26th. Each show included a Latin phrase. So should you want to learn some Latin, there's a hundred phrases out there. You can watch it on our Facebook page or our website and see it. If you ever say, gee, I want to hear more of Father Charlie, there's a hundred half hour episodes. You can listen to me for 50 hours if that pleases you to do that. And uh, I don't encourage that necessarily. We're going to do something else. Uh, we're going to take about a month or so off and then come back. It was too much fun doing the show. I don't want to give it up. So we'll come back with something similar or maybe a little bit different uh, over the summer months. On the 25th of May, I celebrated my 24,826th Mass. I've been a priest for 48 years as of May 25th. Father John McShane, who covered here last weekend, thank you, was ordained the same year I was. So he was ordained in December, I was ordained in May. So Father John also celebrated 48th anniversary uh, this year. I have to tell you that this is only my sixth permanent assignment in 48 years. I tend to stay around in places. And as of July 1st this year, this will become the longest assignment I have ever had. I am beginning my 15th year with you, which I'm very, very happy to do and I fully intend to continue. The Diocese of Las Vegas apparently likes me 
They've named me administrator here, so that's wonderful. Uh, they've named me the rural dean, so I'm in charge of the 12 rural parishes of the diocese as dean. I'm on the cemetery committee for the Diocese of Las Vegas. I'm on the personnel board for the Diocese of Las Vegas. I'm on the council of priests for the Diocese of Las Vegas. I think they just waited until I couldn't drive and couldn't read, and then they just assigned me to all these things. Uh, whatever it is, it's, it's working out as best we can. Last weekend was the ascension of the Lord, and, and I was all set for that because I really wanted to emphasize that Jesus didn't leave us, he went to heaven to lead us, to show us where we were destined to go. And I think that's important. He wasn't ascending to leave, he was ascending to lead. And I think that's still a good message for us to know. And his disciples were to be witnesses to the truths that he taught. And that's still our job, to be witnesses to the truths, truths that Jesus taught. This week, because of the positive COVID diagnosis or test, I did not feel sick at all. So I was trapped at home for a week, bored out of my mind. I don't intend ever to retire. I don't know what I would do. People seemed very concerned that I would eat. So an entire spinach lasagna was dropped off, a whole pecan pie, a Capriati's 12-inch turkey sandwich with extra stuffing and cranberry sauce on it. One of our parishioners went to Panda Express and brought me orange chicken, egg rolls, and fried rice, enough for about 10 people. <laughs> uh, a homemade apple crisp came in. There's enough food in my freezer now that I could hibernate for the winter. Apparently you do not want me to die of starvation, so I am very, very grateful for that. I was so bored during the week, though, that one day I found myself on my knees in my bathroom cleaning my shower floor. That's bored, if you go into that. Really is. Uh, one of the things I did do that has some value, uh, I'm still a member of the Archdiocese of Newark, and we have a requirement that every priest who dies, the rest of the priests who are still living, is supposed to offer a mass for that priest. And I had not updated my list since 2019. So I went through all the old emails, all the old notices from the Archdiocese of Newark, and I found that there were about 20 or so priests who had died uh, since 2019 up until this past week. So I, I definitely wrote down their names and I'm getting ready to plan to offer their masses. Among the priests who had died, there were three bishops who had died. And one of them was Bishop Charles McDonald. And Charlie McDonald was the auxiliary bishop in Newark and he was my favorite. Uh, he had been a general as a chaplain in the army. <clears throat> he was a very high ranking uh, general. But whenever it came time for confirmation, I always wanted to get Charles McDonald. I always wanted him. He was a good friend of mine. We had been in the military together, although in different branches. He was easy to work with. And whenever I would call him to come to the parish for confirmation, he had only one question. Charlie, are we going to go to that same restaurant we went last year? <laughs> and I would say yes, and he would say, then I'm coming. <laughs> he liked the Roman cafe very, very much. And Charlie used to write one sermon a year for confirmation. And then he would give it at every parish that year where he was confirming. And then the next year he would write a different sermon. But the sermons always came back to the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. And they would always be told with a little story, a little background, a little different. But by the time he would get to my parish, I would have heard the story and the idea from all the other priests where he had been already. But in honor of, of Bishop Charlie McDonald, who died in 2020, and all the years of service he gave to the Diocese of Newark and to my parish as the confirming bishop, I thought it would be appropriate on Pentecost just mention those seven gifts of the Holy Spirit and what I think Charlie would have said about it. 
The seven gifts of the Holy Spirit come to us through the Bible and through a, a, our tradition as well. They're narrowed down to wisdom, understanding, counsel, knowledge, fortitude, piety, and fear of the Lord. And if you look at those, all of them, all seven of them, have one thing in common. And that common thing that they have is a respect for what is true. That we're supposed to be followers of God's truth in this world. Whether it's difficult or hard, whether it's popular or unpopular, we're supposed to be witnesses to the truth that God teaches. And I think it's worthwhile to point out, as I know Charlie would have pointed out, Bishop McDonald, that it's not my truth and it's not your truth, it's God's truth. And truth is absolute and it needs to be respected in our lives of faith and in our lives in the world as well. So it's a message for Pentecost from Bishop Charles McDonald. I think he would have approved. God bless you. We stand together for the words of our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. With great hope and trust, we bring our prayers to God, our loving Father. We pray for our church and all those who continue teaching us the ways and the truths of God. We pray to the Lord, the Lord hear our for peace in our world, for the protection of the men and women in our military forces, for those Christians who are persecuted. We pray to the Lord, the Lord hear our for all those who are sick, all those who need our prayers, and all those for whom we've promised our prayers, particularly those on our parish prayer list in the bulletin. We pray to the Lord, the Lord hear our for the blessing of rain on our area and other areas of our world that need it, we pray to the Lord. Lord that all current and future elected officials would, would take care of honoring the right to life from the moment of conception, we pray to the Lord. Lord and for all of the parishioners of St. John the Baptist, the special intention of this Mass, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our Almighty God, we give you thanks for your blessings. Keep us aware of the grace and strength that only you can give. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed 
of the mystery of this water and wine, when we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands that will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept sacrifice in your hands, the grace and glory of his name, for our good and the of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that as <clears throat> promised by your Son, the Holy Spirit may reveal to us more completely the divine mystery and of, of this sacrifice, and graciously lead us to all truth, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with lift up your hearts. Lift up Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for bringing your Paschal mystery to completion, you bestow the Holy Spirit today on, the, on those you have made your adopted children by uniting them through your only begotten Son. This same Spirit, as the Church came to birth, opened, the, opened to all peoples the knowledge of God and brought together the many languages of the earth in pro profession of the one true faith. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. And call we therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. It will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking in the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her together in the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, George Leo, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with St. John the Baptist, with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. 
At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the Lord is now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. We ask those going to communion to please come up the center aisle in two lines. We invite those at home to join with our lector in the prayer for spiritual Holy Communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament of the Eucharist. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul and body. Since I cannot be at this moment receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart, into my soul, and into my body. I embrace you as if you were already there, and I untie myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. 
Amen. 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 As I mentioned, I apologize for there not being bulletins. It's a mix up with UPS. Hopefully they'll straighten it out by next weekend. And if for some reason you wanted one of this week's bulletins, they will be in, they assure us, uh, to, on Monday. <clears throat> Let us pray. O oh God, who bestow heavenly gifts upon your church, safeguard, we pray, the grace that you have given through the, through the gift of the Holy Spirit and pour out upon us here may that we may retain all its favor and that, and that the spiritual food that we have received may be cause for our eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Amen.